to you from West Palm Beach to introduce our next amazing speaker. Her name is Dolores Roth. She's from our neighboring market center here in West Palm Beach. She has been a broker in Palm Beach County for 24 years and worked for five different brands. Dolores has trained over 20,000 agents in over 20 states teaching continuing education courses on short sales and investment strategies. And during the last shift and recession, she has been a productivity coach. She's been a team leader for the past five years. And she is going to share with us the importance of knowing our numbers, especially at a time like this. So get ready for an amazing session. Dolores, take it away. Hi there, everyone here and see me. We good? Okay. Um, thanks so much for the introduction. It's it's a uh, this pa listening to Gary and Nikki. Um, wow, that was simply amazing. I've read this book about every year, probably more than once a year, and. Uh, when they were talking about uh, star power and Howard Britton and it's just like all the memories just came back and I was, I was like, that's where all the information came from. And then coming to Keller Williams and the book and everything being put in order for us. Wow, that's cheating. And so, <laughs> because we all did it the hard way. And I swear, Nikki and I had the same broker that said, can you read? And uh, my first week in, the, um, in that brokerage, I remember going up to him and saying, well, how do I start this business? Where do I get my customers from? And he gave me a white pages phone book. And so, yeah, I'm showing my age because it's 25 years ago. And he said, this was the system, start from Z and call everyone backwards to A. Now, it was a small town, um, maybe, I don't know, 250,000 people and maybe 100. 50,000 addresses, but that's how I was taught to lead generate. And so we all learned it the hard way. I did have the privilege of meeting Howard Britton. I was his chauffeur and drove him around for four days when he visited Austin, Texas. And uh, I was working for a different company in Austin, not Keller Williams. And um, I got to pick his brain. Um, this was the year before he passed and he wasn't driving anymore. And uh, the time I spent with him, wow, having him in my ear as, as I was driving, the wealth of information. And, uh, and I love sharing it with everyone. And I think um, as, you know, being in leadership and being in Keller Williams and given the opportunity to just share everything with everyone is probably the greatest privilege of all. So here I am with the first model in MREA. And um, I do have a poll. I hope we're ready for it. Ryan, let me know. If not, I'll go ahead and... and I got it ready. Ready? Well, let's do this. Let's see how much experience we have. I taught a short sale class a couple of weeks ago that's um, going to be re released in, in July. And so the first thing I noticed was the experience level of the agents that had been around and in the last greatest shift during the recession. And, um, and someone even asked Gary and Nikki, what did they do in 2006 and seven? I think it was when we were doing short sales. And I was pretty amazed at the mix. It was almost all new. And then a few sprinkles of, um, people who who were here in the last shift and and that was amazing um i'm going to end this poll or ryan if you could end it so we could share the results so we can see this there is so much opportunity can everyone see this look at the opportunity here um with the knowledge base that we have yes there's a lot of new agents but the the agents that have 10 to 20 years of experience, tap into them. They've been here. They know what we're going to do. And it's not, we shouldn't be scared. All we have to do is prepare. And we do this every day, but now it's just getting better at what we do. And so I'm gonna talk about the economic model. And uh, I brought this up a couple of weeks ago when my, when my, um, my coach shared this with me, and so I share it with everyone. The original four models in the book 
that we're selling. So we're doing an open house Saturday. Okay, thanks. Um, the original four models make up an acronym and I shared this with everyone in a class a few weeks ago and so I'm sharing it with everyone. So the acronym is E-L-B-O and those are the four models. So just for fun in the chat, let me get my chat screen up. All right, right in here, right in the chat real quick, everyone at the same time, what does the E stand for? in the four models, E-L-B-O, elbow, elbow, four models. What does the E stand for? There you go. See, you're gonna remember these, these four models forever. What does the L stand for in elbow? Economic model and, come on, let's go, let's go. Lee Jen, Lee Jen, got it, right? Elbow, E-L-B, what's the B in the third economic model? The third, I'm sorry, the third model in MREA budget. And the last one, O, and we've got it. O stands for, come on, there you go. So now we know the four models. And the first one, of course, is economic model. So that's what we're going to talk about first. Uh, let me share my screen. All righty, so here we go. The first one is the economic model. So in the MREA, it is page 128 to 132. So we'll go ahead and get started. And um, we already, well, thank you for the introduction. Yes, I've been around, I've been licensed for 24 years and I've had amazing opportunities during that time. And I'm very active with the Realtor Association. So um, sharing, loving and loving new agents, helping them reach their goals. Like that's where I am now. And there is nothing more gratifying than doing that. So when we talk about the economic model, let's get right into it. It is probably the most simple model to follow. And it's just understanding where your money comes from and how it goes out. So your money comes in, we track that. Everyone tracks that. We know we have money coming in, we just don't track what, how much we'd like to come in. So money in is your gross revenue or your gross commission income. Money out. Now there's two levels of money out, but it would be your expenses and cost of sales. Now, if you're a solo agent, you probably just have expenses. If you're a rainmaker or building a team, you wanna be very aware of your cost of sales. So that would be money going out. And then the leftover money, well, that's our net income hopefully not a loss, even though they go together. Now you don't need an MBA to do this. This is really the economic model in its simplest term. So what we want to track is total GCI, subtract your commission, your uh, cost of sales and your operating expenses and your net income. Okay, this does look like math. Yeah, it does but we'll break it down. And we do have to do it backwards to be able to figure out where we're going. So we wanna focus, focus on your numbers. All new agents always ask me, um, what's your secret to success? If you were gonna give me one piece of advice, what would it be? And for me, it's don't reinvent the wheel. This is the model, memorize it, live it adjust it, look at it every day, look at your numbers. It's simple, it's in command, it's in your reports. And at the end of this, I'll show you exactly where it is. You can see all your activities, you can see everything. So focus on the numbers you have to hit, focus on your appointments, and then focus on your conversion because those three pieces of information will help you reach your goals. And I don't even wanna talk about goals. I just wanna talk about your business. Your goals seem so broad. And when someone mentions goals, it's like, oh, I have to think a year in advance and I don't even know what I'm doing next Monday. And so we wanna break it down into little tiny pieces so that it's simple for us. It's simple. It's not math, it's arithmetic. And we can do this. So in the MREA book, there's a graph and of course, it starts off with 
I want to earn a million dollars because that's what MREA is about. So let's look at this. So if I was to net a million dollars and on top of that net, because now I'm going backwards, right? I have $750,000 in operating expenses. Now, as a single agent, if I don't have a team yet and I'm just getting started, these numbers can be overwhelming, but I promise I'll break it down. I promise. And our cost of sales, so your team's commissions are $750,000. So if I add my expenses onto what I want to take home, my total GCI would be $2.5 million. Do the math. And again, it's arithmetic. We can do this. Divide the 2.5 or your total commission by your average commission. So it was 2.5 million divided, um, divided by or multiply 2.5%. So if I divide 2.5 million by the 887.50 average commission, it says I have to close 286 units. Okay, for some of us, that's doable. Or if I'm already doing 50, I can do 100. But if I'm in my first five years of building that very strong foundation, these numbers are a little overwhelming. So let's go to the other extreme. Let's subtract a couple of commas. I want to make $100,000 net income. Everyone wants to make $100,000 in their first year of real estate. I get it. Let's say my operating expenses are $25,000. In the chat room, give me an example of some of your operating expenses. So what would some of those expenses be? Now, we're not talking personal expenses. We're talking my business's operating expenses. So give me an example. Board dues, marketing, gas, office supplies. What's the big chunk that comes out of your operating expenses? At 100000 I've probably capped. So what is your cap? right? Keller Williams percentage, right? There you go. And you might have monthly expenses to your market center. Those are, that's your big chunk, right? So I put in 25,000 being extremely conservative because I don't have any marketing in here yet. But I, when I'm just getting in my first five years, I probably haven't met, done my budget yet. I should have, but we're going to work on that in the, in the uh, third model. So we're going to talk about that in the budget model. So let's say my net income, I would like it to be 100000 and my operating expenses are 25000 So this just simplifies it for us. My total GCI now has to be 125000 At this point, I'd like you to just scribble what you would want your net income to be and put in an amount for your operating expenses and share with us what your GCI would be. So for some of you, it might be 125. And for the rest of you, it might be 250 or higher. It's only three numbers. We can do this. So if you would share, add your net income to your operating expenses and share what your total GCI would be. Go ahead. Take your what you would like to earn, add in your expenses, and there's your total GCI. Go ahead and share it in the chat. Sorry. Go ahead and share it in the chat. 600,000. Thanks, Brian, with that awesome one. <laughs> okay. Anyone else? One person. All right. We'll continue. You take your total 125 units. So, okay. So you take your total GCI and divide it by your average commission. So I did 350,000 as my average commission. Let's see if I can do this here. I took um, 350,000 times 2.5%, which is 87.50. So if I take the 125 and divide it by 
and uh, you're going to have, have to round up or down. It means I would have to sell 14 units. Now, here's the key with this. We're halfway through the year. And if we haven't reached our goal yet, being six months towards the end, being at this time, this is a great time to adjust your goals or um, your economic model for the balance of the year. So if I wanted to make 100,000, but I've only done 25,000, that means for the next six months, this model would be 75,000. I could do this right now. We can put this in command today while we're in this session. We can do this together. So this says I need 14 units sold. Let's say I've only sold five in the first five months. So now I've got to sell the other nine in the next six months. So that's what I'm going to do. So we could figure this out together. And um, we can figure this out together for the balance of the year of six months. Now, this is a little bit more challenging. Here's our conversion. Million dollar agents, if I want to net a million, here's the big numbers. It means 286 units, and I'm not even going to go through this. I'm going to go down to where we are at 100,000. So my sell side, if I was 50% listings and 50% buyers, this would be um, the math that I would use because it's saying 50% of what I'm doing is... Um, is going to be a seller. So that's over here, that's the 50%. If I do, sorry, if I do 75% buyers and 25% listings, my sell side, as you can see up here, the sell side would be 25%. So in the chat room, tell me what your ratio of buyers to listings currently is. So do you do 50-50 buyer listings? Do you do 25% buyers and 75% listings? Tell me your ratio of sellers and then buyers. So 50-50, 75-25, just put it in the chat room. 40-70. So Natalie, it's 40% sellers and 70% buyers. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Cool. Cool. Um, Aaron, 25% listing 75. Okay, so you see how your numbers would adjust? Brian, you have 60% listings. That's awesome. John, hey, John, how are you? 25% seller, 75% buyers. So this is exactly what you're going to do over here. So I did the sell side for you. And you're going to adjust your sell side. I did 50-50 because the numbers were e e even. So if I had to sell 14 units, 50% of them are listings, 50% are buyers. That means seven units have to be sellers. And of those seven, 70% will close. Now it could be higher because if you have listings, probably 90% would close. So that's what that number is. So we're gonna take the seven, Divide it by 70% and it says I need, oh, sorry, it says I need 10 listing agreements to reach my goal. 10. Now, that works because on here I have 70%. So 10 divided by 70% tells me my ratio of appointments to agreements. Now, if you're doing listings and 70% um, of them turn into agreement, you're good. If you're new, it may not be 70, 30. It may be for every two appointments I go on, one would turn into a listing agreement. This is where you have to know your conversion and then the activities associated with it. So on this one, it says, if I take my 10 and I divide it by 70%, I need 14 listing appointments right? Um, and so that would be 12 appointments a month to be able to get my agreements. So let's, once we've done this on paper, so I'm going to go back a couple of screens. So I'm going to figure out what my net income is and total GCI and how many units. 
markets. Then I'm going to split them accordingly to buyers and sellers. And I'll know how many listing agreements I need. In this case, I need 12 agreements, 12 appointments to get the agreements. And it's 50-50, so I need buyer brokerage, 12, 12 appointments to get 14 buyer brokerage agreements. And so it works. So now that I know my numbers, I can actually put them in command. But let me go back and be sure that you're all caught up with me. So how many of you have figured out how many appointments you need to reach the income that you would like to earn, your net income. So share with us how many total transactions or closings you need for the year. When I did 100,000, it was 14. How many did you need? I'll go back to that screen that says, I need 14 units, oops, I need 14 units to um, get my 100,000 net income. Ashton, that's awesome, 34 closed units. That's great. Aga, what was yours? Roxanne, 27. That's awesome. See, those are realistic numbers, right? And you can increase and decrease as you go along, you want to adjust. So we're in June. We're already starting the third quarter, July 1st. So in command, I'm going to put in the difference what I need to accomplish it this year. Out of 14, we've got the same numbers. So I only have six months left in command to put my numbers in. So Aga and Sharon and Roxanne and Ashton and everyone who's being transparent and sharing with us, how close are you to reaching that goal this year? because we have six months left. So what have you done so far? And if you're not tracking it, you really don't have to keep a spreadsheet. That's the awesome thing about KW. If your numbers aren't already in command, you can get your numbers from your own personal multi-year trends report. Everything about your business is in there except your P&L. Everything is in there. It tells you how many closings you had each month and a total year to date. It tells you how many were listings that closed. It tells you how many were buyer sites that closed. It tells you everything. So you can go into my command and my KW and go to your reports and look at your multi-year trends report. So be honest with yourself. If you've had 10 closings, and I'll use, again, my numbers of 14, then I only need four more for the, for the rest of the year. But I'm not gonna be comfortable with four more, right? Because at this point, I have to grow bigger. If I've already done 10, and my goal said I only needed to do 14, I'm gonna grow bigger. I'm gonna change my numbers. And so if I've already done 10, I wanna do another 10 for the balance of the year. So think of what you need to do for the balance of the year. Look at what your initial goal was on the numbers we just did on the economic model. Figure out what you've already done in the first six months of the year. Subtract your big number, take away what you've already done. And that's what we're gonna put in command for the rest of the year. Think big because we now have the time to plan for it. And if we create that map now in command, the system will take care of everything else for us. So let's go to command. Take a picture of this screen. You're gonna to go to command. You're gonna select reports. And I'm gonna show you every single screen after this, because it's only four screens. And you're going to select goals tab across the top. And in goal setting, then get started, set your goals. And those are the numbers that we're putting in, which we just went through. Continue, conversion rates, and we're done. So this is what it actually looks like. So in command, 
I'm going to select reporting. That's a little graph on the side, on the left-hand side where my mouse is. And across the top, you see goals, select goals. You can take a picture of this. And then over to the right, see it's already showing what I put in for this year. Now, my numbers don't look real exciting because I'm not in production, but I do play with command. So don't look at my numbers, um, but it does tell me what I've already done. Then hit goal setting over in the top right corner. So now that you can see your snapshot of the first six months, we don't wanna repeat this. We wanna plan ahead. So we hit goal setting and then right down here, it says, get started. Select get started. Look over on the left. It says this year, and we're going to project for the next six months. So what is your, or you can do the whole year. It's, it's going to figure it out for you. So it says, what, it, what is your 2022 annual profit goal? I said 100,000. What are my expenses and cost of sales? So these numbers aren't realistic because again, I'm not in production. My expenses, I probably would have put like 25,000, which is my cap and expenses. And my cost of sales, if I have a team, I would put in those commission rates. Now remember, um, there you're going to learn um, the percentage of what it should be 30 30 40 um and then and when you go on to the budget model so you'll learn about cost of sales in more depth in the budget model so for now we're going to put our expenses in as a solo agent or single agent so if you don't have a team put nothing in cost of sales and in expenses you're going to put in your cap monthly expenses mls all those things for the year that's it. This is all you need. It's going to do it for you. So all the little bit of math that we just covered, this does it for you. And then it wants to know, what's your business makeup? Remember we talked about how many, what our percentage of listings and buyers was? 60, 40, 25, 75. You can even put leases in here. Just put the numbers in. It's going to figure it out for you. And it wants to know your average commission per unit. Put it in. And then hit continue. And there's a graph that's going to show you everything. It's color coded. I mean, this is perfect. I don't have to do a spreadsheet. I don't have to track anything. I have my multi-year trends report and my command goals. Here it is. I hit continue. And so um, here I put in my conversion rates for listings, buyers, and leases. So you can leave this blank right now because if you look over to the graph on the right, it's telling me what my conversion is. And then I hit continue. That's it. That's it. All right, I'm gonna go backwards because I want you to see this. Once your information is in there, every time you go to reports and you look at goals, it's, and once the data goes in, you see, if you put all your listings, if you put your contacts in, if you put all the data in, the system will give it back to you and show you what directions to take. What do you need to improve on? What do you need more training on? And don't forget in your expenses to include your growth plan and your growth plan is your training. You have to keep reinvesting in yourself and include those dollars in your expenses. Include Mega Camp in your expenses. You know it's every August, include it. Include your training, invest at least one day a month in yourself and put a cost to it. You have to, you can't grow, you can't move forward, and you certainly won't be the skills, you certainly won't have the skills you need to make it through the ship. Because now it's all about skills, lead conversion, and knowing your metrics, knowing your numbers.
questions. Go ahead, questions. I'll keep talking, but if you have questions, put them in there. So a couple of things that you, um, so when we talk about growth plan and building in yourself and preparing ahead for leverage. So one of the things, you know you're going to cap out, right? Because the cap is, is a necessary expense, but um, it's, you're, you're planning ahead. So I know in advance that whatever my cap is, I've capped out. Continue to pay yourself as if you were still paying that, that cap amount. So what, here's what I'm saying. If I'm going to 80-20 split or a 70-30 split, once I cap out, continue to build your budget, your economic um, model, as if you were continuing on with that split and put the other monies aside to prepare to leverage. So if I'm at 100%, but I was 80, 20 before, take the 20% and put it into an operating expense. Add it to your expenses as income. You see, because once I start doing that and I keep just paying myself 80% and I put that 20% aside, then I can plan ahead for career visioning for my first hire, for my first assistant, because I'm, because I'm already putting that 20% aside. So there's little things that you can do to prepare ahead, to plan ahead, instead of fail forwarding. Any other questions? When you're on a team, do you count the team um, split as a cost of sales or expense? Um, it's part of your expense because it goes into your income, right? So it would be an expense. Um, cost of sales is commissions paid. To edit it, we have to go, oh, so to edit it, we have to go to goal settings again and start over, Ryan. Because I think you can just make, yes, you, you'll go over there and start over and just make your corrections. Coaching is an expense. Coaching is definitely an expense. And that's another one you want to plan ahead for. Put your coaching expense in now. So if you're in MAPS coaching, put that $12,000 a year in now, even though you may not already be in it. That way you're planning ahead and it's already there for you. So the whole thing is all about your plan. I know what I'm going to do in the next six months. Can I plan ahead for it? Yes. Can I create my business by design? Yes, it's either, and we know this, it's either by design or default. So for me, it's all planning forward. I know my whole year in advance. I already know when my birthday is next year, so I can already plan for it. It's already there. Couple of things, referrals you pay out uh, in expenses or cost of sales. Uh, if I'm a single agent, I'm going to put them in expenses. Uh, if I was um, a rainmaker, I'd put it in cost of sales. So I guess it depends on where you are. Um, a couple classes that I would um, highly, highly encourage you to plan for in advance. At the end of the year, we do agent financials. And I know oh, we don't call it agent financials anymore, but whenever someone mentions financials, I know your eyes roll back and you're just like, I don't wanna do that, but it's imperative. Um, it really goes through all the financials all the way up to your profit and loss. And we'll do it step-by-step, step, like really simple math and spreadsheets and stuff. So um, take your agent financials, typically September, October, November, so you can plan for 2023. Um, and the other one, which is coming up real soon, of course, is anything about short sales, listings. I mean, your listings should be a science by now. Um, so anything that has the word listings in it, go take those classes. And how many times should you take each class? Every time it's, every time it's available. Career visioning, every time it's available. I mean, how many times have, you, have people taken bold? You hear people, I've taken it nine times. People are like, well, why do you keep going back? I'm not a slow learner. No, it's, I keep learning more and more and more. So keep going and taking those classes over and over and over again, and then go a step further and actually give the class in your market center. Present the classes because it fills in all the blanks. Um, I can't tell what you know and what you don't know. And so I may gloss over something. So um, you either stop the presenter 
or you teach the class. I would love for someone else to teach agent financials. That would be great. But important things, know where you want to go. That's the income you want to make. Know your conversion rates. Know how many appointments it takes to go on to get an agreement. And that's a listing agreement or a buyer brokerage agreement. You've got to list your buyers. Now, that's a course I've heard of. You've got to list your buyers. And then take anything that has, um, that has uh, listings in it, listing classes, every listing class you can take, handling objections, Howard's class. There's, you, you just can't get enough in your brain at this time because you need that skill. And when people say, oh, those answers just rattle right off of you. No, they're in, I've internalized them. This is 20 years of, of really the same conversation. There's not much that there's nothing that's new. There's nothing new in the way we handle our business. It's just doing it the right way and not reinventing the wheel. Uh, is there any clash about negotiations? Um, yeah, there's several classes on negotiating. Um, FES, I believe, has a class, not sure. Um, but I've seen them at your at realtor associations as well. All right, any questions? Ryan, how are we doing? You're going good. Sorry, I keep on missing the mute button. <laughs> yeah, We're doing good on time. You've got about another five, eight minutes. Cool. Questions. Questions. Any questions? Um, Brett, Agent Financials, I'm telling you, that's uh, you can't take that enough. Just can't take it enough. Um, So, um, Roselli, Ryan, she's, she needs to make corrections. So if we have to make corrections in our command goals, we just go back and start our goals over again? If it's in your goals. A lot of times what I see the issues are is people are not putting the dates in under their opportunities. So make sure that when you're creating your opportunities that you are filling the dates out. And that should help correct a lot of the issues. If you have any more issues beyond that, please get with your market center tech trainer and let them take a look at it and see where the issue might be. We may have to submit a ticket on yours. Yeah, Ryan, that is so important. People always wait until they have the listing under contract. And so you're missing all those numbers along the way. So, it, so when you get that listing, uh, throw it in compliance and the numbers will go in there. When it goes under contract, do the same. And when it closes, it's the only way the system knows that you actually have that listing. If you follow the process from contact to close um, in command, it really, the system really is cradle to grave and back. It tracks everything you put in there. If you put your appointments in there, if you put your listings in there, if you put your numbers in there, it tracks everything. It, let's see if I can go back to this first Just screen. put those dates in for you. You have to put those dates in, so make sure you put those dates in. We're actually trying to take it so that once you know those dates at those times, it's gonna create a conversion ratio for you. And based upon your conversion ratio, it may tell you if you need to take certain classes because we're gonna be very soon moving uh, pieces of connect into, Man, like you see connect up there, there's gonna be class brought in to connect at the top that you're gonna to be able to look at. So very important. So it'll be intuitive to the numbers that you have in there. Correct. You wanna make sure all those dates are in there. Those dates tell you exactly um, what your conversion ratios are because it knows if you went on an appointment or if you lost the appointment. But you have to put the dates in. That's it under the opportunity when you're in the opportunity or when you're, if you've already created the opportunity, you just go in to edit the opportunity and it'll allow you to, to uh, change the dates right there. So this is um, another screen that's in your reporting section. It's right in your reports. Um, and it's the bottom half of the, the screen that shows your numbers on it and everything is color coded. And the middle one shows you your conversion rates, but your numbers have to be in there for it to do it. So that's what Ryan was saying, you have to put your dates in there. So if you just invested 
um, five minutes at the end of each day just to look at this and to make updates for your activities during the day, then it wouldn't feel like you were working so hard and stressed and not going anywhere because you could actually see how you're progressing. Sometimes you sit there all day long and you're working and you're putting all types of activities in, but they're not the 20% of the activities that you need to achieve your goals. And so looking at this actually tells me, here's where I need help. Here's where it's not working. Here's my, my GCI breakdown. I have to do something in the next six months. And even though I'm telling you, you have six months to reach your goals or to adjust your goals, you really don't because you really only have July, because we're in July, August, September, and October. You really only have four, four months because the last two months, you're working on January of 2023. So let's be honest with ourselves. Let's be honest with our goals and um, the income that we want to achieve. We can do it. Because if I tell myself I want to earn 75 between now and the end of the year, I can do it. If I want to hold myself accountable, I can tell my coach, this is what I want to do. I can tell my team leader, these are my numbers. Hold me to it. Right? We can do it. Any other questions? So this was the beginning of your journey today, the economic model. Um, it's probably the, the easiest one to get started with. And it's the foundation and the other ones um, all, all like layered on top of this one. So E was economic. What was L? What was L? Elbow. E L it's leverage one lead gen lead gen lead gen leverage is in there, but it's the lead gen model. So now that we know how much we need to make for the net income that we want to earn, now we're going to go into the lead gen model and we're going to fine tune that and hold ourselves accountable and build that strong foundation for lead generation you know, that heavy, that phone, heavy phone calls, um, and everything it takes to lead generate to be able to achieve these goals. So good luck, everyone. I'll see you.